is uh, Jan Jensen. Uh, I'm a theoretical chemist at the University of Copenhagen. Uh, and I work sort of at the interface of, of quantum chemistry and machine learning uh, right now uh, in molecule and reaction discovery. Well, so, so pure J physical chemistry or pure J in general really combine my two favorite things in publishing. Uh, so one is open access uh, and one is uh, impact neutrality. Uh, so in fact, I think it's, it's and actually a third one then, which is open peer review. Uh, so, so it has a, a very nice uh, combination that I think is rather unique. Uh, and so that's really um, an opportunity, I think going forward specifically uh, with the impact neutrality. Uh, I think one thing I would like to see as, as editor in chief of this journal is that people, the researchers see this as a place where they can have an honest discussion of their results, right? If you, if you remove this, this sort of impact, this nebulous impact thing uh, that, that everyone is chasing, uh, you can really just write what you did, write what you found, you can be as critical as you want, and it won't really impact uh, the acceptance or anything like that. In fact, it would, I think in, in my book, it would further it, right? Uh, negative results are fine as long as they're described as such, and I think are actually incredible, incredibly valuable to the scientific community, and and never more so than now with with machine learning, uh, where you see a lot of areas suffering from the lack of of negative results. So I think uh, pure J physical chemistry should really be the the the, the haven uh, for these sort of things and, and and should be a positive publication experience for everyone for the author the reviewers the editor uh, everyone so i've been trying to publish open access for the last 10 years as much as as much as possible and i really think that that's the only way forward uh, a, a lot of it's not just that that the research should be available to everyone. That's certainly one thing, and that's a very important thing, uh, right? But, but the other thing is that this, this open access has made it clear um, to a lot of people that some of the costs of scientific publishing that were hidden before uh, in, in the negotiations with the libraries, the subscription fees, right? They're now seeing how, how really how bloated that's become. Uh, and so one of the very attractive things about PeerJ, uh, physical chemistry and PeerJ in general, right, is that that is one of the, the more uh, inexpensive options for open access, right? It's not, just, it's not there to turn a profit, right? It's there to cover the costs of open access publishing. So I think open access is, the, is, is really the only way forward if you, if you think about it in a, in a rational way. Uh, impact neutrality. It's separate from open access, but, but like I said, uh, also a very, very important thing. And it's, um, I think in a way also the, the only way forward um, in terms of sort of an, an equitable publication experience for everyone uh, without the biases and, and uh, sort of subjective um, considerations that go into these, these high impact uh, publications in many ways. So yeah, I think, I think the main change, um, which I touched on earlier is, is sort of the, the honest discussion of results. So, so if, you, if you sort of take the, the impact considerations and move them to the side, how would you really like to discuss your results, right? Uh, it would allow you, you need some place where people can be critical about their own results. Uh, they know them better than anyone, right? It's in, in, in an ideal world, it's really up to the authors to be their, their own worst critics. I don't see a place right now, uh, other than pure J, where, where people can, can do this comfortably. Uh, so that's, uh, that's uh, certainly one thing. I think also the, the open, uh, peer review process. Uh, I think if you can, sh if people get used to that. Uh, so in my experience, I'm publishing with PeerJ now for nine years. 
and, 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 and in general, right, the reviews that I've gotten on my own papers have been a bit more constructive than average. And I think that's due in part to the fact that these, that, that I can choose whether these comments should be published alongside the, uh, the paper. So I think that keeps everyone sort of on the civil, civil side of things. Uh, I should say another, another thing that's very near and dear to my heart is, is code and data availability. Uh, so that's, that's something that, that definitely I will have an eye on. I think uh, computational people, I'm one of them are better than I think uh, doing slightly better than average, but I think there's still a lot of room for improvement. The code should be available. Of course, the code should be available. Of course, the data should be available. And so that's another uh, area that I would really like to, to expand or, or at least focus on. Definitely recommend all reviewers should make the, the comments public. I think it's, it's, it's the, the review is an integral part of the paper actually. And, and so it, it's, I think it also offers sort of an, an, an interesting alternative to, you know, for the editor and the authors to, to sort of how do, how do they, how do they respond to the reviews, right? A, a good review in process is a discussion as much as a sort of list of, of demands, right? And, and I think it would also give the editor a little more leeway in saying, well, maybe not implement it, this particular change, but be aware that it's going to be alongside uh, the publication. I think it's a it's a much more richer uh, reading experience when you also at the same time can get the opinions of two or three other people. Uh, how how can't that not make the experience better? 